Community and Freight. I'm your host, Sydney Edwards, bringing you the latest tech updates, warehouse news, everything happening in the cold chain world. Now, you know Running on Ice, the show, then you know Running on Ice, the newsletter. I write it every Wednesday and Friday, covering much of the same things that we talk about here on the show. So before we introduce our guest, let's get into some headlines. Now, Lineage Logistics has the go-ahead to start building on a new cold storage facility in Laredo, Texas. In an article from LMT Online, this build is being called Project Genesis. It will span 250,000 square feet and cost $80 million. It has not been decided where Lineage plans to build the facility, but LMT says Lineage is looking at a plot of land at Port Laredo Industrial Park. The company says Laredo is a significant port of crossing between Mexico and the United States, and this build is an opportunity to fill the demand for storage in the area. The site will be open to anyone looking for cold storage, primarily for produce and meat, and will work with local food banks to store food. This project will bring 80 jobs to the area once complete. And Belicio Foods is expanding operations with a $40 million investment to its production facility in Jackson, Ohio. Baking Business reports that Belicio Foods makes frozen meals under the popular names Michelina, Boston Market, White Castle, and more. This expansion will focus on new equipment, upgrades to the site's production facilities, a new daycare center, and on-site counseling center for the building's 1,000-member workforce. That workforce is expected to grow with 177 jobs opening with this construction. And after more than a century of keeping the business in the family, Wells Enterprises is being bought by Ferrero Group. An article from Globe Gazette says Wells is the maker of Blue Bunny ice cream, Bomb Pop, and Halo Top ice cream, while Ferrero currently owns Nutella, Kinder, Tic Tac, and of course, Ferrero Rocher. CEO Mike Wells says Wells Enterprises is focused on adapting and calls Ferrero a like-minded company. He says this acquisition puts the business in the best possible hands. Wells Enterprises is headquartered in Le Mars, Iowa, and the Globe Gazette says they have over 4,000 employees. The deal is expected to close in early 2023. Now for the fun stuff. Today, I'm joined by Ivan Mamchalov. He's the Vice President of Capacity and Yield at Amplify Logistics. Ivan, how are you today? Hi, Cindy. I'm doing fantastic. How are you? Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for joining the show. It's been great so far getting to know you. I know before the show, so let's get into a couple of things. I haven't had you on before, so let's start with some of your background. Tell me, where did you get your start in cold chain? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm going to backtrack a little bit, right? I got my start roughly 10 years ago in a traditional 3PL environment, um, you know, and kind of took uh, some of that knowledge and translated it into opening, um, you know, a U.S. division for a Canadian startup. Uh, at that time, um, you know, I transitioned a little bit into um, the food and beverage space a little bit after that. Um, and then I really uh, dove into the refrigerator side of things specifically at my previous employee at Highway Hall. Um, but as of the last couple of, of years, really my main focus has been optimizing supply chains in the food and beverage segment of the industry, um, really understanding the capacity side of things and, and how that plays into an effect against the market fluctuations that you run against and um, really anything that has to do with optimizing capacity and our customers' uh, expectations and their KPIs from a service level perspective. And so I know you just said that you previously worked at Highway Hall, but you've recently made this shift. Tell me, what are you mm -hmm. doing now? It's at Amplify Logistics, correct? Yeah, yeah. Let me give you a little bit of background about Amplify, right? We are, you know, a leading 3PL provider um, that found its roots actually north of the border in Canada. Started with uh, Cargo County Group, which is an asset-based provider. Um, you know, it's actually one of the largest triaxle reefer uh companies up in Canada. Um, and really the, the whole idea with Amplify is, is, is to amplify your supply chain, right? And, and we want to provide not only asset-based solutions, but if there's a 3PL solution on the table or any type of warehousing or anything that has to do with cold chains in North America specifically, this is the niche that we're really focusing on is the food and beverage segment as well. Um, but our roots, like I said, are really in from the asset side of things. Uh, and I think that was really the main factor with me specifically. Um, you know, I've always been a trucker, you know, I've always been a capacity guy and um, really coming back to the basics and, and really coming back to the roots of, of this industry, especially with everything going on in the economy right now. And, 
really having an understanding of what drives that trucker, what makes their life or business successful. How can we help them really elevate their game or elevate our customers' uh, expectations through that partnership with, with our uh, carrier partners and providers? And so having just started on the team at Amplify and, you know, working with the trucking community, of course, in capacity and yield, I know you just mentioned that you want to know what drives a trucker. In your past experience, what have you seen so far? It's changed a lot. It's changed a lot over my experience. You know, I, you know, when I first started in the game, it was a lot of it was quick, quick. There was not a ton of competition, right? There was only a few players in the game. The carriers really worked with four or five people. Um, you know, the name of the game was really build a name for yourself, build a business. Um, but now there's a lot of competition. Now there's a lot of options. Um, obviously, a lot has changed since the COVID days. And, and really, the biggest adjustment that we've seen with our drivers is 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 wanting to stay home a lot more, right? Having that 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 life with their families and, and being able to be home conveniently. And we all know that, you know, if you want to run a load across the country, you're probably not going to come home for 14 days, um, you know? So that's been one of the, the biggest pain points that we've observed specifically with some of our drivers is, is having that need uh, to be home a little more often, right? So then you, you start thinking about what kind of solutions can we provide to our customers where we guarantee that whether that's, you know, drop trailer facilities or, or working on different synergies and cross border and cross docking and things like that just to optimize things a little bit better and, and give you that peace of mind and make sure that we can return you home when you need to be home. I also think that there are just a lot of things in the industry in general that are changing. You know, like you said, people want to be home with their families. They want that paid time off. They want that sick leave. They want to have certain benefits that they, you know, were never offered before. It could be, I know I mentioned in my headlines, but like Childcare services, counseling center, better exactly. facilities at rest stops or better facilities at the companies that they work for so they can Absolutely. take a nap and shower and do all the things that, you know, they would be doing if they worked a different job and were at home yeah. or, you know, working somewhere 100%. else. And I think yeah, it's, 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 go ahead. Sorry, um, I was going to say it's, it's more than just that, right? It's not just the, the life at home, but it's also providing that guidance when it comes to the market dynamics and their operating costs, right? We know what it costs to release a trailer or to buy a truck, and we can help you with that as well. We can guide you and we can show you what your return is going to be, right? When we're talking about that yield portion, it's one thing for you to buy a truck and a trailer and, you know, have a couple lanes that you're running. Maybe you have a dedicated uh, lane or a dedicated project that you're doing, but when it comes down to it, do you know how to run your miles against your hours of service, against your rate per mile, against your operating costs? You know, there's so many different factors that play into this. And, and really that's the, the, that's how we want to amplify your logistics. You know, we, we, we know those things. We think about those things and um, you know, our average age, even with our drivers, is you know roughly 30 years old, 28 years old on our end, and we have that mix. We have that knowledge of of the younger generation as well as the older generation that has really been around it for for a long time before any of these changes even happen. Really being able to be under their guidance, right, almost like a mentorship from the older drivers or the older. Um, really employees that are going to amplify learning a lot from them, but really taking that young energy and, and, and really taking it to the next level. You know, it's interesting that you say you're seeing a lot of truckers in that, you know, late 20, early 30s ages. Of course, we did not see that 10, 20 years ago. People were aging out of the industry, really, when it came to trucking. Yeah. And that's what we want, though. We want younger people to get in the business. Of course, it was never looked at yeah, as being glamorous, but these are the things that they're looking for that make it a good job to work in. Of course. But again, it comes down to really thinking of it as a business, right? How, how do you grow? How do you stay profitable? You know, you know very well that when you open an MC, for example, you can only have so many trucks in your insurance. How do you grow that account? Who, who's going to grow it with you? You know, where is your freight coming from? How do you how, how do you really sustain in business? Right. And, and, and who's there to guide you when things happen? Right. And Interesting right now, right? We're in Q4. We're in, we're in the middle of Q4. It's the busiest time specifically for food and beverage. This is when everything moves for the holidays. December has always been a really, really tough month for capacity 
overall, right? It's specifically in food and beverage. And um, think about the different market dynamics. You know, what are you eating for Christmas, right? There's a lot of ham that moves. So like all that turkey that was coming from the Arkansas, you know, Oklahoma areas, now it's moving up from Omaha or Iowa. You got a lot of frozen pies and cakes coming out of the Midwest that are filling into Walmart for the holidays. So understanding those dynamics is what makes it fun and what makes it very interesting specifically for me to provide that guidance and, and really build out a network that makes sense for everybody. And so let's dig a little bit deeper into that. The holiday season is here. Christmas is just weeks away. I can't believe it. I'm sure you can't believe it. But yeah. what are we seeing being moved right now? What can we expect yep. to happen in the next couple of weeks turning into the new year? Yeah, I mean, as I said, so you got to think about what people are consuming, right? Like around these holidays, a lot there's a lot of seasonal freight. There's a lot of small little projects that, that you really start getting involved with. Uh, but we're in, a, we're in a market where it's all about the service right now. You know, you can have all the fancy bells and whistles and all that stuff, but, you know, are you going to pick up on time for me? Are you going to deliver on time for me? Are you going to be there for me on the Wednesday before Christmas to pick up a load that was just dropped on me, for example, you know? Or um, how are you going to really dictate how your service levels are into these times? That's, that's what really matters in this current environment specifically is always just execute, execute, execute. And um, that's what's really going to make you stand out at the end of the day. And these are the opportunistic times for, for uh, a lot of providers and a lot of carriers where – this is where you can really help people out. This is where you get stuff in the nor in, in the Midwest. It gets a little bit tighter from a capacity standpoint. The Northeast as well. Um, you know, you know very well that Arizona is also pumping a lot of freight right now. Uh, we know the southern border in McAllen is also in Laredo is very busy. Even your your mention of lineage opening up their facility down in Laredo. I mean, this is what's been happening over the last few years, and, and really that cross border interaction between Mexico and Canada and the United States, it's, it's, it's ramping up more and more year over year. So you just have to be creative. You have to come up with different solutions. Uh, you really have to understand what's going on from, from sailing schedules to, to climate changes to, you know, any commodities that are coming and crossing from Mexico, Canada, or any shifts. You have to be aware of all of that just to be able to, to service and execute and really procure the right truck and the right capacity to handle that. I'm curious if you have any specific tips when it comes to planning for this, prepping for, you know, the holiday season, food and beverage being moved and, you know, yeah. December here. Yeah, I mean, a few tips, right? I mean, you know, if you have a drop trailer program, you got you to pull everybody out by the 31st and, you know, they, are they going to be open on the 31st? So you have to do two days before that. You know, a lot of those little things that you might think are almost like a common sense, like sometimes you drop the ball on them. You know, you don't think of them until it's too late. So beginning of December you got to be working on January and February, right? Like your December strategy should have been established a month ago. So now you're just simply executing. You have your plan and you execute. And, and I think that's where we probably could, could take the edge down the road is, you know, we understand what's happening. We plan for it ahead of time. So when the time comes, we're not scrambling last minute, trying to figure out how to either cover a last minute load or how to get some of our, our, our assets back to, back to their hometowns. And, um, you know, that planning all begins weeks in advance, really. Um, but it all comes down to having that conversation with your customers, having that conversation with your carriers, understanding that, you know, some drivers might take some time off. Some customers are probably going to take some time off. You know, if this is, if, if you think this is the chance to maybe onboard new customers, get new business, guess what? You got about five days. And after that, everybody's closing down for the year. And you might have to talk to them in January or February before you get your first shot at a load. Um, but the same thing on the carrier side. You know, we, we have a ton of drivers that are going to be staying at home for over the holidays. So how do we plan those trips and all those uh, contracted loads that we already have committed for all of our customers? Because it, it doesn't matter if it's Christmas week or, or, you know, any first week of April. Your contract's your contract. You have to execute it. You have to service it. And that's it. With such a busy season like this, I'm curious what you think might be the most frustrating or stressful part of the job. Let's maybe talk about carriers specifically with what they're moving and what they're going through right now in this peak season? See, again, right, I think a lot of when you're, when you're separating the markets too, right, a lot of carriers, if you're a spot-based carrier, it's tough. It's very tough. You know, if you haven't established your laneways, you haven't established it, even your baseline, your head hull, right? You're, you're in Chicago, take care of your Chicago outbound religiously, right? How do you get back, right? That's where, that's where it gets fun. How do you plan your trips? I think that's that's been a... 
I don't want to say an issue, but, but, but an inefficiency that I've noticed through my career is, is really putting that understanding of what markets are moving when, how does that rate change? How is that going to affect your bottom line? When do you need to start adjusting? Right. And um, really being that, that council, it's almost, you know, consultating uh, different carriers or even drivers and, and really telling them what's happening, why it's happening. Um, what's your best recommendation on, on really sustaining their business and growth. Uh, but in terms of specific, you know, um, commodities, as I mentioned, Iowa and, and Nebraska are going to be busy, right? We all know that there's a meat, meat country, then the Great Plains is always going to be busy. We know California is probably slowing down over the next couple of months. So that there's not going to be a ton going there, but heading into California, it's going to get expensive. You know, it's just the simple supply and demand, different dynamics, uh, going into Q4. And again, you go up to the Northeast, you got a couple storms coming your way in the next couple of weeks, probably too. Before our call just now, we did talk about some of these dynamics working against each other. Let's get into some of what those dynamics are and if, if there is any way to help each other out when these dynamics are just, you know, going against each other. Um, yeah, I mean, what specifically would you like to go over? The, uh, the market fluctuation or more so the commodities that we're moving? I think for the sake of getting ready for the holiday, let's talk specifically commodities. Sure, sure. I mean, the hams, right? The frozen cakes and pies. It's going to be, it, there, there's there's a lot coming out of a lot of these, you know, cold store facilities in the Midwest specifically, shooting out to the Northeast. Uh, you know, meat country, it, it will be pumping freight for the next couple of months as well. Um, you know, we know that Protus is going down south. Uh, you know, Macal and Laredo borders from previous experience, I know that those are also the busy times for Mexico season um, and anything shooting up to the Northeast and the Midwest. Uh, but the problem right now is a, a lot of it is, you know, a lot of these carriers are, they're having a hard time finding that dedicated freight, really. I think that's that's the issue is finding that consistency, um, but also having enough capacity to sustain that consistency on a weekly basis. You know, unfortunately, a lot of the smaller truckers, um, you know, you don't have a sales and marketing department. You can't really go in and, and get dedicated lanes for, for your truck. So you have to either use a 3PL, you got to partner up with somebody else. Uh, but then you might not even have enough capacity to, to run an entire laneway. So we have to get creative. You know, we have to bundle some of those things up. We have to partner up with a couple smaller carriers, maybe to, to run a, a, a large award for, for some of our top shippers. Um, but yeah, I, I hope that kind of sums it up a little bit on your end. Absolutely. And because I'm not, you know, sp specifically in this industry when it comes to dedicated freight, I'm not moving it. I'm not calling for it. I'm not, you know, a driver moving it as well. Why, why isn't there more dedicated freight? What is happening where, you know, they can't find freight to be moved? What is happening here? Well, more so when I speak of dedicated freight, I mean, from a 3PL perspective, right, that's our job is, is really onboard the dedicated freight. And it's really our job to partner up with capacity that is able to handle some of those laneways, right? So, Again, the bigger fleets have that advantage. The bigger fleets have the fuel cars. They have the maintenance, right? They 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 have all these discounts and equipment and parts and things like that. And um, it, it's a lot easier for them to to optimize those routes. You know, where their their operating costs are a lot lower, right? They, they their operating ratios are much better than than somebody with five to ten trucks. So. This is where a lot of carriers will go to a 3PL provider, for example, and really see if they can they can contract a lane through them, uh, essentially, and, and really service it. Um, but, you know, with the economy and everything happening over the last couple of months, we're seeing that pinch from anybody that really invested in their equipment in the last, you know, 12 to 14 months. You know, that that's where it's, it's getting scary to a point now where, um, you're seeing how high your, your, your monthly payments are. You see your insurance, you see how the freight markets are kind of diving and, and really not moving up nor down. They're kind of plateauing to an extent. Um, but then you're, you might get stuck in a market that doesn't really follow the status quo, right? Like nationally speaking, things seem to be very slow, very flat, but you zoom into a Southern market out of Yuma or out of Nogales on a Friday afternoon, a ton of freight, not a ton of capacity, even though it's slow overall, right? Similar with any of the other border cities or, uh, like I said, peak season in the Midwest is, you know, 
you might not find a truck sometimes, right? But you got to plan for those things. You have to be able to map it out and, and really understand what your risks are um, and have those conversations ahead of time if you need to. Absolutely, Ivan. Switching gears a little bit and looking forward when it comes to the market, cold chain in general, where might you see it going? I can sit here and I can interview guests on my show. And of course, I know that, you know, everyone's always buying more. Everything is usually growing. Cold construction is happening everywhere. It's slowing down right now. And everybody's afraid of a recession. Everybody's afraid of rail strike happening, all the above. What do you see happening maybe in the next year, five years down the road? Interesting question. I mean, I'm not a crystal ball, right? Like like nobody else, but I, I, I've seen a lot more um, kind of like centralized hubs, like you mentioned, like with the warehousing and, and really the LTL consolidation, um, really being able to regionalize some of those moves. So maybe I'm taking a wild shot here, but you know, some of those long haul lanes, I, I see that splitting up a lot more and more down the chain. And, and that's going to be interesting because right with food and beverage is a very sensitive product. So um, you have to be very careful every time you move it. So if you're not running a long haul, you're probably splitting up into a couple shorter hauls. So your risk might be a little bit higher, but if it optimizes the trailer, if it optimizes the hours of, of the driver, and like I said, bringing it back to drivers wanting to be home a lot more, you know, there, that, that's where I think things will probably start shifting a little bit maybe on the cold chain is, is really going into a little more of a regional uh, models. And you probably see a lot more cold storage locations being popping up just like lineage. Right. Uh, yeah, I think that's my take for right now, at least. But um, visibility is obviously going to be huge. And, you know, there's a lot a ton of great providers that would provide you that, you know, um, real real temperature humidity and all that kind of good stuff so really just making sure that the quality of the product is also good and um you know being part of many different food and beverage events over the last year you know some of the technology that's coming out specifically for uh you know the quality of the product or the quality of the food that you're transporting before you even load it on a trailer you know it's it's revolutionary I think I would agree with your point in that things are becoming more regional. I believe we, I spoke about it on my last show that there are so many of these cold storage warehouses, um, distribution facilities, things being built for, you know, connecting those mm -hmm. routes to allow yeah. for the short hauls. And I, I think I would agree with, with that being in the future. Yeah, and you, you throw in the hours of service, right? That's that's the caveat over the last couple of years that everybody's trying to crack that code, right? How many miles can I go against the hours that I have? Am I getting the rate per mile that, that you know optimizes my costs? And can I repeat that over and over again, or did I just get lucky once, you know? And um, but ELDs, I mean, I think that's that's really the, the answer to it. And then even north of the border, there's there's a lot going on right now when it comes to uh, some of the new regulations that are possibly could be happening up in Canada as well. So interesting for us to kind of keep an eye on both go, what's happening in the U.S. market and the Canadian market and how we can intertwine specifically on a, on a, on a reefer perspective. And, um, you know, there's a lot of, lot of, a lot of people are afraid to, to, you know, split up things if you're cross boarding because, you know, you want, you want your trailer to just basically go through the border and, and not have to worry about a warehousing space. But if the need is a warehousing space before borders, you know, that's what we have to do. Ivan, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm curious if there's anything new coming up that you're working on or that Amplify is working on in the future. You know, specifically for me, I've done it a couple of times. I'm here to build a capacity network. You know, that's that's my expertise. I, I want to make sure it makes sense for, for the customers that we have. We work with a lot of Fortune 500 customers and, and really looking to provide that additional solution on the domestic U.S. side of things. Um, so I'll be very hands-on in ensuring that um, anything that we're putting together on the domestic side here in the U.S. Uh, really complements anything cross-border and really anything that our, that our customers are requiring out of us. And um, yeah, I'm just excited to, to take us to the next level. And where can folks hear more from you and more from Amplified Logistics? You can always reach out to me on LinkedIn, uh, Ivan Mountjelov, or you can find us uh, online, AmplifiedLogistics.com. Um, be happy to answer any questions or if you just want to chat, more to it. I'm curious if there's anything you're working on right now. Is there anything specific that we could be looking out for? I don't know if you ever post anything online that people can see. 
I'll let's let's leave it as that for now. You know, I, as I said, we're we're just starting in the U.S. market. More to come from us. Um, you know, we want to make sure we have everything set in stone, but um, looking to provide a lot a lot of synergies between that Midwest, Northeast, uh, regional markets specifically. So I'll leave it at that for now. Well, perfect. Ivan, thank you again for joining thank my you. show. Thank it's you. been great, and I'll be checking in with you. I, I'm excited to see how things go with Amplify. Awesome. Have a good one. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Now, I will be linking this show in my newsletter. It comes out tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern time. You can find it at fruitwaves.com. Again, it is the Running on Ice newsletter. If you are not subscribed to it yet, you definitely got to go and subscribe to it so you can get it twice a week, every week. Coming up next week, I'll be talking with the folks of One Rail. You're not going to want to miss it. Stay tuned. You can check it out right here next Friday, 7 p.m. We'll